Okay, so now we're going to have a look at Dijkstra diagrams. So Dijkstra diagrams are very popular exam questions and actually quite easy once you've got the hang of it. So a Dijkstra diagram will ask you to find the shortest path between two points in a network. So here's our diagram and in our diagram we're going to be asked to find the shortest path from S to T. So in a Dijkstra diagram question, they're always going to give you the network in a format which we can actually apply Dijkstra's algorithm to. So here's the format they will use in the exam. So we want to start at S and get to T. So we're starting at S, so I'm going to put a 1 in this middle box, because this middle box tells us which part of the journey it is. Okay, if we're starting at S, then actually the journey has taken a distance of zero, so we'll put a zero in there. Now there's three possible directions I can go from S. I can go up to A, which will take me five, so I'll put a five there. We can go down to B, which will take me a journey of six, or we could go to the bottom to C, which will give me a journey of two. I want to pick the smallest one of those. The smallest one of those is the bottom one, C. So this will be our second point. So I'll put a 2 there. And our total journey time at C is the number at the bottom of the box C, which is also 2. Now where do we go from C? Well, from C, I can go across to T, which will take me 12 more. So the total journey time would be 14. Or... I could go up until B, so I can go up to B, which will take me two more, which will give me a total journey time of four. We now have two numbers at the bottom of this B box. We want to use the smallest one of those numbers, so we don't really now need to worry about the six. Right, so we look at the now the boxes with uh, numbers at the bottom, and we want to pick the smallest one. So the smallest one this time is 4, which is B. So this will be our third point. The total journey time at B is 4, because 4 is the smallest number in its bottom box. So we're now at B. We've got two directions we can go from B. We can go up to D, which will give us a total journey time of 8. It's 8 because we started at 4, this 4 here. Right? Or we can go across to T, which will give us a total journey time of 12 because we're starting at 4 and we're adding this 8 here. As you can see now at the bottom of the box T, we've got two numbers. We don't really care about the 14 anymore because 12 is smallest. So we now look at our three boxes with numbers in the bottom, and the smallest one is 5. So this will be our fourth choice, with a total journey time of 5, because 5 is in the bottom of that box. There's only one place I can go from A, and that's down to D, which will take 4 more, which will put me on to 9. Well, 9 bigger than the 8 that's already in that box, so we can cross it out. We're not very interested in that. Two more boxes, we've got D, which has got an 8 at the bottom, and we've got T, which has got a 12 at the bottom. Which one are we going to choose? We're going to choose D, because D is the smallest number, so that's the fifth one we're going to choose. And that has a total journey time of 8. Where can we go from D? Well, only one place from D, which is down to T, which will take me three more, which will give me a total journey time of 11. 11 is the smallest one out of 12 and 11, so we cross out of 12, we're not too interested in that anymore. And now we're only left with T. T is now the only thing we have left. So T will be our sixth and last choice with a total journey time of 11. What this means is the shortest path from S to T is 11. Sometimes the question will then ask you to actually say 
what the actual short path journey is. So we normally use a highlighter for this. So we're starting at the end. So we start at T, right, and we work backwards. So we're at 11, our journey time is 11 at T. And there's three places I can go backwards. I could go back three, and that will take me to D. I could go back eight, and that would take me to B. Or I can go back 12, and that will take me to C. Only one of those will be OK. And the one that's OK is the one that takes me up to D. The reason this one's OK is because if we have a total journey time of 11 here, and we take away this 3, that will give me 8. And that's OK, because that all adds up. The other two options, they don't add up. So now we're at D, we've got two choices of where to go. We could go up to A, or we could go down to B. Well, if we try and go up to A, if we're starting at 8 and we're going back 4, then this number here is wrong. It can't be 5, because 8 take away 4 would be 4. So it's not that direction. We're going to go down to B, because 8 take away the journey of 4 will give me 4. So that's OK. So we're now at B. So now from B, we need to go back. So we have two choices. We can go straight back to S. But as you can see, that won't work because that's 6 there. The journey times don't add up. If we're starting at 4, we can't go back 6. So we can't go back that way. So instead, we have to go down. We go down because 4, take away the journey of 2, leaves us with this 2 here, which is absolutely fine. So we're now at C. We need to go back now. There's only one place to go. We just check it adds up. The 2 take away the journey time of 2. That will give us 0. So that's back to the start. So we can make a list now of the actual journey time. So it was S to C to B to D to T. So that's the journey we took. So that's Dijkstra diagrams.